Australian singer gave the president a birthday gift from Down Under. The Bellas are suspended. You're being replaced by the European champions. We are the sound machine. How are we gonna compete with them? I'm not supposed to have any ideas. I'm the hot one. I'm pretty sure I'm the hot one. If we win the world championships, will you reinstate us? If you win it. <laughs> Rebel, congratulations on the movie, first of all. Absolutely oh, loved you. it, just like the first one. Yeah. And talking about the first one, the first one was an absolute juggernaut of a hit. Were, was everybody expecting that? And were you, were you surprised at just how big it became? Because it was a small movie, the first one. I mean, it was just a bunch of us in Baton Rouge, Louisiana just kind of like we were at a musical theatre camp, just making something for ourselves. <laughs> and then people really found it. I mean, the first movie, it it wasn't like, didn't open that big. We didn't have like lots of publicity or anything. And yeah. people just like said, oh, that movie's like really funny and, and found out about it. And then it got released in, in like the whole world. Yeah. And <laughs> we're like, oh, cool. <laughs> and just the fans' reaction was so strong that we had to come back and do a second one. So we made it for the fans who really loved the first one. And the fans' reaction to you, because your, your character, it was a big character, but it wasn't the main character, but yet it's probably the most quoted character. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so are you surprised when people, I assume, come to you and quote, the, quote back to you from the first movie, do yeah, they? Yeah, um, a lot of my jokes about horizontal running or mermaid <laughs> dancing really made an impact with people and uh, <laughs> helped them in their daily lives. Uh, probably not. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was, you know, so flattered when I would see people wearing a T-shirt as one of my sayings on it Brilliant. um and fat amy is just such a fun character to play because she's so confident and sassy and um so i was definitely wanting to play her again okay uh, when you first saw that the, the first time around when you saw the character around and fat amy a lot of people yeah. just go oh, i'm not not doing that that's not not part of my remit but did, did you ever think twice with the character did you go she's a brilliant character i want to do it no i was just like i'd actually played a character called fat mandy before <laughs> in australia <laughs> so i was like oh yeah uh fat amy i same thing. Got prior experience uh, playing a similar <laughs> type of character. Um, you know, as a comedian, you got to use your physicality. You got to use what whatever you were given with um, for your comedy as part of your arsenal of comedy weapons. Mm. And um, when I read the first script that Kay Cannon sent me, um, I was just like. I think, even though Fat Amy was about the seventh biggest character in the original script, mm -hmm. I just thought, oh, I think that character really pops and, yeah. and is very, very funny. She certainly pops. She's brilliant. Uh, as if from the moment this movie starts, you're kind of the cent center of the whole production because you're hanging from the ceiling like a Cirque du mm -hmm. Soleil thing. When, when you yeah. read the script, did you go, because I hear you're, you're afraid of heights. I is am. Right? I am. Even <laughs> this morning, I was in a building with glass you know, floors and looking down, like I get, oh, I get really scared. Like I have to hold on to things <laughs> when there's stairs and there's gaps in stairs. I have to like hold on to the I'm railing. Saying. I'm paranoid. I'm going to fall. Um, I have actually fallen from a theater roof before in a high school production of Fiddler on the Roof, oh which God. made me very paranoid <laughs> that I was going to kill myself Understandable. in this movie accidentally. Um, but I had a very good coach who had performed with Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas in a number of shows. And I trained for five weeks. Um, and on the day I went much higher than what I'd ever rehearsed at. Yeah. And I said, I'll just do it three times, crush it. I'll seem really confident <laughs> and let's just get it. And then let's just like move on. <laughs> and right. I don't ever have to do it again. <laughs> and did it work? Yeah, it did. Oh, and we really? crushed it. And, you know, I'm so proud of it that I did actually achieve it in the movie. Because otherwise it would have been a completely different opening to the film. Okay, well, this movie is all about singing. I'll ask you very quickly. I wanted yeah. to ask you, I know you, do you still live with Matt Lucas? And I want to know whether you both, do you sing in the shower? Yeah, and if you do, what does I, Matt am, sing? I am moving out soon. Are you? <laughs> but, um, he's kicking you out? No. Um, I just like becoming so successful that I had to like <laughs> buy my own house um, Love it. and I mean Maddie's like an older brother to me he's such such a great comedian and mm -hmm. um, such a great guy and so we've had a lot of fun <laughs> living together but now I'm like now I'm like spreading my wings um it turns out like totally not good enough to be a music producer which is cool and fun to know as I enter the rest of my life okay I'm just gonna stop you right there <laughs> You're the most talented person that I know, and I've met three of the Wiggles. Intimately. Oh. Becca, do you know how awesome you are? You're Becca effin' Mitchell, okay? You're the big BM.
That's you. You're awesome. Do you need some of my confidence? Because I could maybe tone mine down a notch. Yeah, okay. Then let me rub some out. Oh, okay. Wait. I think you need a bit more. It comes from there. Okay, thank you. You just need that. I'm going to get you the good stuff now. No, I don't want butt confidence. I, I don't want your butt confidence. You I don't want your butt <laughs> No, I have enough. I have enough. Well, Elizabeth, congratulations on the movie, first of all, Pitch Perfect 2. I loved it. And um, this is a, a little bit different this time around for you, obviously, because you're the director this time around. What was it like being in control of the cast? <laughs> like, did they treat you like a boss or what was going on? Um, yeah, I mean, I was the boss. Uh, <laughs> it was really, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. And um, it was very, it was something I was working towards for a long time. Okay. And, um, you know, a really natural progression, I think, uh, coming from working every day on the first film, working really closely with Jason Moore, who directed the movie. And, you know, we're really protective of our little movie. Um, in that it's got such a special tone. I think it was really surprising to people the first time around and very much, um, uh, part of my personality and this one as well uh, reflected in both films and so it was a really natural progression to take over the directing duties. Yeah and it, is, it a, is it a tough gig? I know it's a tough gig doing all this promotion stuff to make you tired but I assume if you're running from behind the camera telling everybody to do and then running into the scene that's probably more tiring. You know? <laughs> you know the days that I the, the worst part about acting in the movie frankly was I had no time to do hair and makeup that was the <laughs> hardest thing to find so I literally did it like while I ate breakfast and while I ate lunch Okay. and I never shot a scene of my pretty much until either after lunch <laughs> or like the very end of the day I sent everyone home okay and then John and I could just do our thing oh no I, lo I love a cappella. I love music do you ever when you're directing a film like this do you ever go listen just stop singing I like I need a, I need a, I need a break from singing right now <laughs> you know I love I still love the songs that do you? Make on the movie yeah I'm still I'm so excited for the soundtrack which you can pre-order right now um, <laughs> and I just I really love the music I actually find that I I'm starting to prefer our acapella versions of songs over the originals. I'm like, oh, that's what Timber sounds like? <laughs> oh, I totally forgot. Because, you know, we're mashing stuff up and yeah. having fun. I just think the girls have done just such an amazing job. I love this. And you're, you're a co-presenter in the movie. Stuff he says is outrageous. It's even more outrageous this time around. When yeah. you read the script, were you, what was the most shocking thing? Or do you ever go, when you're doing it, do you ever crack up and ruin a, ruin a scene by yeah, laughing? Yeah, absolutely we do. Um, we... The script this time, I mean, we have amazing jokes written for us. And then, you know, John's one of the greatest improv artists that I've ever worked with. And I've known him a long time. We wrote the role specifically for him in the first film. And so to have him back and to be able to play his partner, it's... We have really too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you've loads coming up. I know you've you done Magic Mike XXL. Mm -hmm. What can we expect for that? Because ladies of Ireland are very excited about this movie. They should be very excited. Should they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was on set um, during a couple of the major dance routines, and uh, it was it was pretty good. It was pretty <laughs> sweaty. I was actually, I watched the routine. Joe Manganiello hurt his arm doing a routine. Right. And when you see it in the movie, you'll understand why. I mean, it. It, he really goes for it. They all do. I mean, it is like, it is XXL. Congratulations on Pitch Perfect 2. Love Thank to you. Max. Love you to you. meet you. And um, first of all, I wanted to talk about the first film because it was an absolute juggernaut hit. It just took over everywhere. It's still, everybody's still watching it on DVD and TV. Were you surprised at how big the first film was? And was it obviously a no-brainer that the sequel was always going to happen? Um, definitely surprised that the film uh, was as much of a juggernaut as it was. Um, we knew it was, when we were making it, we knew we were making a, a really good film that our friends would, would love, but like that's about 50 people. Uh, <laughs> so um, we did not have any sense of what it would do. Um, you know, we had no idea that this cup song that we heard uh, Anna Kendrick do in an audition um, would go on to become a global phenomenon. We just, yeah, we had no idea. Um, and as far as the sequel, um, it, it, it was not immediately obvious we were going to do a sequel, to be honest. Um, and, and frankly, that, that was the studio's decision, not, not ours. Uh, but um, I think it was uh, primarily the uh, re response and reaction that um, came from the, the home video piece, uh, okay. when people really started watching home video and pay TV, and those numbers were staggering. Right. And that's when everyone said, wow, there's this 
much larger fan base than we even realized. Okay, and what is it you think that people love so much about the, the, the Bellas? I mean, they just literally click there. Is because there's so many of them, there's somebody for everybody to identify with, or what? Or is it the music, or what do you think is the one thing that seems to be, because it's a worldwide hit? Yeah, uh, I don't think there's one thing, um, which is probably part of the reason why it is what it is. Um, I think you correctly hit on several of them uh, factors. I think we have a series of characters that are um, all very relatable in different ways, and different people can kind of hook into uh, different characters based on different views of the world. Yeah. Um, and a lot of those characters are based on people we or the writer have known throughout our life. Um, and so they're kind of, they're heightened examples of real people. Um, and then you combine that with the music and I think we, um, you know, created a lot of great original music that you hadn't really heard before. People had not heard a cappella in a real way before that. And so I think that combination of grounded, relatable characters, irreverent comedy, and the music, that kind of hybrid amalgam is what, you know, makes the film go. Who run the world? Girl, girl. Who run the world? Girl, girl. Hey, bring it on, baby. All your friends, you're the ish, and I love that body. You want a ball? Listen, I swear you're good. I want to come on body. Girl, that's all women in body. Hey, 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 h